Well, it seems like it's finally spring, so I thought this would be a good time to talk about leafhopper problems on grapes. So I just wanted to start off by saying that this presentation is intended for people who live in the eastern Sierra, so Inyo, Mono, and eastern Kern counties. Uh, the rest of California, you know, we've got better understanding of the leafhopper problems and management strategies, but this is a sort of a, a new pest in our area, and we don't necessarily have all the resources. So this is intended for eastern Sierra only. So if you've been anywhere near your grape plants, you know, in the last uh, few years and looked at them or gone to harvest them, you've probably noticed that the leaves look absolutely terrible. They're going to get crunchy and discolored, especially in the middle of summer. So this problem is what we're here to discuss today. Looking a little closer, you can see that the symptoms are kind of a stippling. There's white areas, uh, usually along the veins, where the Basically, the guts of the cells have been sucked out and it's turned white. Eventually, the problem gets so bad that uh, the leaf will shrivel up and die. Clearly, this isn't good for your grapes. So the symptoms are usually seen on grapes. They're the worst. Virginia creeper, a common vine that we have in our yards in the Owens Valley, uh, it seems to be pretty well affected. And then sometimes we see this on Boston ivy, but only a little bit. It's not really anything that you need to lose any sleep over. The characteristic symptoms are white stippling on leaves. Uh, I usually see it worse near veins. When the problem gets out of control and really breaks out, uh, the leaf will eventually die. A good telltale that you've got an insect problem is that when you reach in to check out what's going on, little whitish insects, they'll, they'll jump around and, and get in your face when you move the leaves. Here's a good close-up shot of the damage. So you can, this is called stippling. You can see it's sort of a, a random small little spots of white scattered along the leaves. This is a very typical symptom that we see on grapes around here. Here's a real close-up shot of it. You can see that it's not exactly pretty. And if you look in the center, you can see that there are some uh, black areas. And that can be, you know, the frass from the insect feeding. And in some cases, um, you can see that there'll be um, sooty mold. It might not be easy to see on this picture, but if you look in the extreme top right corner, you can see the actual nymphs uh, of the insects causing the problem. So what's going on? Really, we have leafhopper problems here. There's three species that attack grapes in our area. Uh, the first is the grape leafhopper. Second is the variegated leafhopper. And our newest addition to leafhopper problems is the Virginia creeper leafhopper. So the first thing that people think when they have something white jumping out of their plants is you have a white fly problem. And although the adults are kind of whitish, um, at least we don't get a good look at them, um, this is not a white fly problem. We do have white flies in our area. White flies can get on grapes and a bunch of other things. But what we're seeing uh, in the Owens Valley and other areas that are having problems like this, it's not white flies. It's leaf hoppers. So I want to go over the three different species and show you what they look like so that you can identify them. We're going to start with the grape leaf hopper. Now this one has light color and has very well-defined uh, markings that to me look kind of calico. On the left you can see what the adult looks like, but usually the adults are flying around, so what you're going to see is the nymph. And the nymphs are the babies, and in, on grape leaf hoppers they're kind of a, a pale yellow color, not very interesting looking. This is the variegated leaf hopper. This one is more common uh, in Owens Valley than the grape leaf hopper. This one is uh, found throughout the valley. Um, you know, you have no problem finding one of these attacking your grapes. And they have busier markings. So there's coloration all over the place. The design is very intricate and small. The nymphs are yellowish. This uh, insect is probably worse uh, as you get further south. There's quite a bit of it in Lone Pine and Olancha. But next is the Virginia Creeper Leafhopper. And this is the one that's causing most of the problems right now. It has kind of a zigzag marking. And the nymphs are really easy to identify. They have dark spots. So you can see the, the picture there. It's pretty clear that that one looks different. So this insect is relatively new to our area. It's only been here a few years. 
I don't know exactly when it started, but I know about five years ago I started getting a lot of calls about it. And there are not predators for this leafhopper yet. Uh, they just haven't developed high enough populations to do any sort of control. So as a result, these explode into huge infestations that do a lot of damage to grapes. I've checked uh, every year uh, since I've noticed these, and I've never seen a predator anywhere on the, um, the grape leaves. So this can be a real problem. So normally with uh, leaf hoppers on grapes, they can take quite a bit of damage and they don't really have much effect on the, the final outcome. But the numbers of these can get so devastating that they really will have an effect on your grapes. So we're going to have a little discussion about uh, how to control this. It's always good to be able to identify what creature is attacking your grapes. So of the three types that we have, I come up with an easy way to remember which is which. So the grape leafhopper has, the adult anyways, has sort of a, a calico appearance, like a calico cat. The variegated leafhopper, to me, um, looks kind of plaid. And then the Virginia creeper leafhopper, to me, it looks like rickrack. So that's kind of an easy way to tell what you have. Uh, remember that the nymphs have spots for the Virginia creeper, and that rickrack design is a good giveaway that that's what you have. But if you see sort of a just a pale-looking nymph without much design, or a, a nymph with um, kind of a yellow color, you probably have the other type of leafhopper, and they're not as damaging in our area. This is our culprit, just to reiterate. You can see the you know, sort of zigzag design of that dark marking across the back. And this is the insect that's causing us problems right now. So let's talk briefly about control of leafhoppers. So we don't have any predators in our area. So if, when you have a good predator population, you can, you know, monitor uh, the nymphs on a leaf and you can look at the back and you can see what percentage have been, you know, attacked by predators and you can make an educated guess whether or not you're going to need control. But we don't seem to have predators. And clearly this is a runaway problem that we have a frequent uh, issue with. So we can't rely on predators right now. Eventually we probably will get a high enough population, but for now we don't have them. So a little bit of minor damage on your plants isn't anything to lose sleep over. This isn't something if you see a little stippling going on that you're going to need to go and you know get out the big guns and try to control it. So if you have a little bit of minor damage, don't worry about it. It's when you have a major problem that you need to change your strategy moving forward. So if you do want to control this, the secret is to control nymphs. The adults are really tough to kill. They're flying around. Uh, they're just not uh, they're pretty tough creatures, but the nymphs, especially when they're small, are on the back side of leaves, and they're, they're not too hard to kill. You can knock the numbers back enough that you can manage to still have your crop in really good shape. So the key is to check often. You know, you can begin right when the leaves start coming out. Make sure to look at the back side of leaves. That's where you're going to find the nymphs. There's sometimes some on the front, but the larger numbers tend to be on the back. So gently turn the leaf over and take a look. And check several leaves, don't just look at one. Now, if you had problems last year, that means you're probably going to have them again year after year after year. So if you had a really bad spot, don't wait until your damage is severe and then try to control it. Try to do it earlier. If you can get it earlier, when there's only a few nymphs, uh, you can probably get better long-term control over the course of the season. You know, don't aim for necessarily a pristine, you know, leaf stipple free kind of situation. But if you can keep the numbers so there's only a few uh, on each leaf, then you're probably going to be okay. So I've got two strategies to look at. The first strategy would be for people who had it bad last year. If you had it bad last year, then I think you need to be really vigilant about checking the back leaves for nymphs. You know, maybe do that weekly. When you see several nymphs, you need to spray pretty soon. And what do I mean by several? I don't really know. I don't have a good answer for you. We don't have um, thresholds established for this area, and we don't have any predators. So you're just going to have to use your best judgment there. But if you see several, take care of it. You pretty much have three options you can use. You can use insecticidal soap. You can use a, a summer oil, also called a narrow range oil. Or you can use neem. None of those are perfect but uh, they help some. 
probably the safest to use, um, you know, in terms of you not messing things up would be the insecticidal soaps. So be sure to read the label of all those products and, and follow the directions. The directions have been figured out for a reason and they're meant to be followed. If you didn't have much of a problem last year, um, but you still see some damage going on, just go ahead and check for nymphs. If there's a lot of nymphs, that probably means that you're on an upswing and you're going to be starting to have it bad. In that case, you're probably going to want to spray. But if you only see a few and things aren't really changing and the damage isn't getting worse, you know, just relax. You probably don't need to do much of anything. Uh, some places just seem to get it worse than others. And if you're in one of those communities that gets it really bad, then you, know, you probably you already had it bad. This won't be the first time. If you're in a new area, you know, you may not uh, have had much problem in the past and you might just be developing it. So the secret in both cases is to, to check for nymphs regularly. It's not hard. It only takes a few minutes to look at the back of some leaves and see what's going on there. So hopefully that covered uh, grape leaf hopper problems for you well enough. If you have more questions, the Master Gardeners would be glad to answer them. You can send your questions to our email address, immg at ucanr.edu, or you can call our helpline. Good luck, everybody. Stay healthy.